माय नेम इज अभय कुमार एंड वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग आवर हिजाब डिस्कशन टुडे आवर गेस्ट इज जावेद आनंद यू नो हिम वेरी वेल he is journalist and civil rights activist he has studied at uh, bombay's iit but later he started uh, working as a journalist and his career started with a daily now uh, friends when uh, in in the late 1980s when uh, india faced severe communal rights and attacks on minorities uh, along with titsa uh, sitalwar well known um, activist and journalist he founded uh, uh, sabrang uh, communication uh, house and then he started co-editing combating communalism which uh, uh, primarily deals with the issue of uh, communalism his articles keep appearing in reputed uh, newspapers and recently he has written a piece on hijab con- controversy in indian express dated february 18 and when i read that piece i had some questions and then i requested uh, javed anand sir to spare some time and have some dialogue he agreed i thank you very much sir, sir the first question is that the name of your organization sabrang communications means uh, celebration of pluralism and multiculturalism but why does hijab fail to find a space in your conception of pluralism multicultural multiculturalism the other religious minorities may fear that tomorrow javed anand may say that turban is not okay beard is not okay veil is not okay so is it the right politics you are pursuing sir uh, before i answer your question dr kumar let me thank you for having me on, on, on this program and <clears throat> thank you very much secondly i uh, wish to submit that i think you have got me somewhat wrong i am not against hijab per se i am not against six wearing turban per se or sadhus dressing the way they are they do or the nuns that they do or muslims who keep beards or anybody who keeps beards the context in which this article was written is the context of uniforms in schools now the 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 impression that is being created both within india and abroad it almost seems like in karnataka if not in the rest of the country hijab or burqa or whatever it is has been banned all over karnataka that is not the case we will come to the communal politics uh, aspect of the whole issue later on but the fact is that at the moment the whole issue is concerned it started with the question of whether muslim girls should come can come to and should be allowed to attend classes with hijab which is contrary to the uh, the reported uniform dress code prevalent in those schools and we are talking about girls schools here so we are talking about in the context of that so outside that whether in karnataka or the rest of india as of today thankfully people are free to dress as they wish whether it's muslims or christians or sikhs and all and i repeat i am not against people whether they sport beard whether they wear turban whether they wear hijab whether they wear burqa whether they wear a sadhu dress or whatever i hope that clarifies my position the context in which i have written that piece is one like i said the question of uniform in school the second question is that to say for the girls to say that this is mandatory in islam it is not my understanding of islam and i wish to state that it is not just me any number of progressive islamic scholars across the world men and women will tell you that there is no mention of the uh, hijab in the quran it is not a quranic requirement and therefore it is not an islamic requirement it is the uh, considered to be mandatory in islam within certain interpretations by certain uh, in influential individuals and organizations such as maulana maududi such as sayyid qutub and the uh, those organizations in india who subscribe to their world view so i have two two issues one is i have no problem if somebody wants to wear whatever it is it is, it is their choice men or women it, the question is of uniform in the school should that be followed or not two is the question of 
to call it mandatory even in the high court before the karnataka high court full bench where the argument is going on <coughs> the argument has been that this is a uh, their right to religion because it is mandatory in islam it is right to religion and right to culture so much so that a very well known uh, and highly respected lawyer sanjay hegde who is a supreme court lawyer who had started appearing for the muslim girls who petitioned the high court he tried to introduce into the argument in their favor of the muslim girls hijab wearing girls that it is also a question of choice and they have removed him so they want to insist and the those who are supporting these girls want to insist that this is mandatory in islam and my position is this is not mandatory in islam the moment you say that you exercise enormous pressure on the entire muslim community to to do so then you end up with kind of two year old and three year old girls in hijab attending nursery classes attending first standard school in full hijab that is not the teaching of islam as i understand it that is not what what, what the quran says sir i will take up the questions of what is essential part and fundamental part of religion and what is not but when i read your article mm -hmm. uh there is one uh, quotation where it is given that some muslim uh, uh, family were earlier wearing dupatta and then under the influence of let's say uh, uh, influence of religious people they started wearing hijab so one could ask the question that how could dupatta be seen as free from patriarchal structure and hijab could be seen as embedded in patriarchy no uh, the uh, the the elderly women mothers of some of these girls who are school going today i have quoted from what they have said in the indian express article a report that had appeared in the article today that in our in our time we used to attend school without hijab kyunki humko us waqt jo hai to dharm ke bare mein itna maloom nahi tha abhi hum samajh gaye hain to isliye ab hum hijab pehante hain ab abhi hum kya samajh gaye hain ki it is mandatory in islam ye kisne unko samjhaya hai ye popular front of india ye dr zakir naik ye jo hai to sdpi social democratic party of india जो मौलाना मौदूदी के मानने वाले हैं देखिए जो ट्रेडिशनल मुल्लाज हैं मौलवी हैं मुफ्ती हैं वो तो एक जमाने से ये हिजाब जो है तो बहुत जरूरी है बहुत जरूरी है सबसे पहले तो औरतों को घर से बाहर ही नहीं निकलना चाहिए और अगर निकलती हैं तो फुल हिजाब में होना चाहिए उनकी बात जो है एजुकेटेड क्लास नहीं सुनता था इसलिए आपको अक्सर कहानियाँ मिल जाएंगी आप अलीगढ़ में जाइए तो खासतौर से अलीगढ़ मुस्लिम यूनिवर्सिटी के जो पुराने स्टूडेंट हैं कि वहाँ पर दादियाँ और नानियाँ हिजाब नहीं पहनती थी मैं हिजाब नहीं पहनती थी वहां के स्कूल और कॉलेज वगैरह में आज वहां पे बुरका जो है तो रायज हो गया है तो ये एक नए इस्लाम का कॉन्सेप्ट जो कि पिछले अस्सी के दशक के आगे से आपको देखिए कि दुनिया भर में उसके बारे में आपको हजार रिपोर्ट मिल जाएंगी जो है तो गूगल सर्च में कि किस तरह से पेट्रो डॉलर का इस्तेमाल करके सऊदी अरेबिया ने उनका जो कट्टरवादी वहावी इस्लाम है उसको सब जगह फैलाया है और उसी का परिणाम ये हम देख रहे हैं कि आज बच्चियां कह रही हैं सातवें सातवें स्टैंडर्ड वाली आठवें स्टैंडर्ड वाली कि हिजाब जो है तो ये मैंडेटरी इस्लाम है सातवें और आठवें वाली बच्चियों को कहा से ये कितना उन्होंने कुरान पढ़ा है कितना इस्लाम समझा है किसने उन्होंने समझा है तो इस दुपट्टा का सवाल नहीं मैंने जो कोट किया था वो और जो मैंने अभी कहा कि दादियां और दानिया को तो करती थी आप आप केरला में चले जाइए आज से 20 साल 30 साल पहले वहां पे आपको हिजाब नजर नहीं आता था तमिलनाडु में नजर नहीं आता था कर्नाटका में नजर नहीं आता था अब ये सब जगह राज हो गया क्योंकि एक नया इंटरप्रिटेशन जो इस्लाम का है वो जो है तो लोगों के मन में बिठा दिया गया है और हमें उससे इतराज है सर सेक्युलरिस्ट फोर्सेस प्रोग्रेसिव फोर्सेस विद इन द मुस्लिम कम्युनिटी विद इन द हिंदूज कम्युनिटीज दे आर इन लार्ज नंबर दे आर एक्टिव दे आर डूइंग देयर वर्क बट व्हाई देर इज ए टेंडेंसी दैट यू ब्लेम एवरीथिंग एवरी इल्स फॉर द मुल्लाज एंड यू डू नॉट सी व्हाट इज द रिलेशनशिप ऑफ द स्टेट विद द माइनॉरिटीज कम्युनिटी हाउ मेनी स्कूल्स हैड बीन ओपन व्हाट इज द बजेटरी एलोकेशन फॉर द माइनॉरिटी कम्युनिटीज यू seem to project mullahs as being very powerful social group controlling everything 
and even sachar committee has said that there are only 4% uh, muslim uh, students who go to madrasa so is it not that you are giving too much importance to religious authority and you are not looking at uh, the fact that a state is majoritarian a state is not doing anything as far as the welfare of minority is concerned i beg to differ with what you are saying you have mentioned for example that tista and my wife tista who is my colleague and my comrade and my wife and i started communalism combat the journal we left our job in mainstream journalism in the 92 93 to fight communalism communal politics and if you go through the pages of communalism combat or even today sabrang india online of which i am co edited like i was co edited in communalism combat 80% to 90% of our energy is devoted to addressing the problem of hindutva the problem of majoritarian politics the direction in which this country is going and how dangerous it is uh, we agree with the uh, uh, warnings of somebody like george stanton who is the president of genocide watch that india seems to be kind of moving towards a genocidal state which is uh, alarming and it should be a matter of alarm for everybody for all secularists whether the hindus muslims christians or whatever it is i am equally alarmed so that is one side of the picture but i do not deny that most of my energy goes i am a founding trustee of citizens for justice and peace which you might be aware of the fight that we have had in gujarat for 20 years to punish the guilty okay so so that is not outside my radar that occupies most of our energy but we have learned through hard experience in the same 30 35 years that we've been engaging with the question of communalism that minority communalism and majority communalism feed on each other point number 1 the majority communal communalists are bent on proving that muslims are backward muslims do not uh, believe in the law of the land muslims are this and muslims are that and whether it is a question of triple talaq or whether it is a question of uh, uh, other issues such as the question of polygamy that is pending in the supreme court just now <coughs> the uh, uh, stand that is taken is something that alienates muslim society from the secular mainstream and i am not talking about the secular individuals the secular organizations i am talking about aam aadmi who is secular minded whether he or she is living in a village or a town wherever it is on these questions there is a need for reform in the muslim community and that reform process is being obstructed by the world view of the mullahs and that that is something that is holding the community back from its forward march in indian society and as as much as in the world and today there is a struggle going on within muslim society whether it is india or pakistan or usa or france or Of the many of the African countries, which are Muslim majority, where this struggle is going on between two different worldviews, two different interpretations of Islam. One is Islam that is an understanding of Islam that is consonant with, that sees no conflict between the core principles of Islam and the core principles that are embedded in the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, Universal Human Rights. or that are embedded in the supreme court constitution of india under the fundamental rights section and there are those who believe that islam mandates something quite different so it, i am a part of that struggle as much as i am a part of and most of my time is spent in fighting hindutva and majority in politics the same indian express that you quoted just now the last article i wrote about this was an open letter to mohan bhagwat and if you were to read that i think you would not be saying what you are saying sir uh, is it not uh, unfair that uh, to say that muslim communalism and hindu communalism both are responsible for social ill and tensions in the society how could you blame the most marginalized the victim for the injustice being inflicted on them how could you put hindu communalism and muslim communalism on the same plate they the best, best example in current times is how asaduddin waisi the majlis ittehadul muslimin their politics feeds into the politics of the hindutva politics you look at that closely and you will have get an answer to your question there itself 
so is uh, is uh, asaduddin obaisi so powerful are all indian muslims voting for them no, him only no 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 the question is not whether he is as powerful as hindu majoritarian for hindutva is i have never said that i am not saying that don't get me wrong but the point is they legitimize each other through their politics so hindutva can point out to to what asaduddin as anwesi statement made by asaduddin anwesi or something done by popular front of india in karnataka or kerala and say look this is what is what is happening there and they use that against the community as a whole muslim community as a whole and therefore they need to be at the, the problem that they bring to the table needs to be addressed and i am not apologetic about that at all sir uh, now uh, coming back to your questions on the basic uh, tenets of islam you wrote uh, in your piece in indian express that all the quran ask of uh, muslim men and women is that they dress modestly and decently now the question is if muslims women interpret in their own way that what is modesty and if they choose to wear hijab what should be the problem they they should one feel free to do what they do but not in a school where there is a uniform prescribed in aligarh muslim university for example runs a number of schools and colleges where there is also a uniform prescribed <coughs> and you have to follow the rules of that uh, of those schools in aligarh muslim university so you are free to do your hijab or burqa or whatever it is but not when it's a question of up joining the police force or joining the army or a uniform in a, in a school etc that is my problem number 1 my proposition number 1 my proposition number 2 is the moment you say that this is mandatory this is the idea this is what islam wants so to me that, that is what the quran But is sir, talking who about who will decide what is mandatory who will decide sorry who will decide that what is the essential feature and essential part of islam maybe so that, that as a believer i will interpret so therefore there is going to be a debate within islam and that debate is going on the right now so nobody is stopping debate but why hijab should be stopped sir hijab should be stopped in a school where there is a uniform prescribed i am repeating sir, myself you, again and again sir but you should also keep in mind that in a majoritarian society in a society where majority culture is so powerful so dominant you visit any school you will find that uh, pictures and a statue of god gods and goddesses are everywhere you will find that swaraswati puja is being celebrated you will find that um, all religious uh, symbols are being used so instead of critiquing that majoritarian symbols why there should be so much uh, discomfort with any mark of minority religious symbol appear in the mainstream it should be celebrated sir no if you are talking about in the school i am absolutely uh, in agreement with you that there should be a religion neutral kind of an atmosphere in a secular school and But therefore so, so as, as much sir, it is not possible religious net uh, a space being neutral as far as re religious symbol is concerned is not possible because in every society majority communities majority religion is so powerful that they will have their impact there so so the better way will be that let's celebrate the appearance uh of the of the minority culture their religious symbols is it not the right way to approach it sir i am sorry i do not agree with, with this I, uh, i i i think the school should be one of the among the few secular spaces where uh, there is a uniform prescribed for example in the university at the university level there is no uniform prescribed so muslim women are free to kind of attend classes in hijab i have not i have no problem with that i am talking about a school where there is a uniform if the uniform is prescribed for everybody if there is saraswati puja there should not be saraswati puja or or then or then they should also allow so that is hindu majority in politics and i am opposed to that but sir as a teacher but, you should think, but sir. but as a muslim but as a secular muslim as a progressive muslim who is concerned with conservative qatar qatar wadi kind of orthodoxy being promoted and push down the throats of in, there's a process of indoctrination on within the community i it is my job as a muslim to resist that and i will resist that but sir as a teacher you imagine a situation or as a scholar you are giving a lecture if some of your students come in hijab they sit is it going to disturb the academic atmosphere of the classroom what is the notion of a uniform please tell me 
what is the idea what the is the principle behind is, a uniform uniform is disciplining the body i will choose what to wear why authority in a state should decide that what should be the uniform at so one night you will say that uniform should be in blue color next day you will say that it should be the red color who decides that what will, what should be the standard the this, world is moving towards upholding pluralism uniformity one culture these are very regressive things sir but that is what the popular front of india is doing that is what the wahhabis are doing they are imposing a uniformity on indian muslims that was never there but sir, they are not our ideal sir, they are they, not our ideal who? they are not our ideal no no but, front of but, Indian, Wahhabi, uh, no Wahhabi but they are, are not our they, ideal. they they are imposing a uniformity on indian muslims and indian muslim women in particular which was not there 20 years ago 30 years ago 40 years ago therefore in 20 or 30 or 40 years ago you had muslim girls who were going on to classes dressed the, the language that they speak the their mode of dress was very similar to what the hindu you could not make out between a hindu woman and a muslim woman 30 40 years ago there was no sign of burqa and all this is now you are there, there is a well defined agenda objective a program to impose the hijab on all women just two three days back i had heard from some muslim activists from amravati who had joined the popular front of india about two years ago and they said they left after a few months because they they thought that it is fighting for muslim yes, community sir, popular front of india is active in a very a small part of southern india it has no uh, big all <laughs> india presence so to say that everything which is happening in muslim society it is because of popular front of india this is also i think not true and i have thing, not said that i have not said that i have not said that i am quoting a specific example from amravati firstly please uh, get rid of the notion that popular front of india is limited to small pocket of uh, south india they are not no longer that that is true they are expanding all over the place it is not just them it is the Wahhabism that that petro dollar has promoted in this country. It is a tablighi jamaat which kind of keeps telling everybody that do not even think about this world or any problem. Zameen ke niche ke baat socho or asman ke upar ke baat socho. And the kind of impact that they have on the emotions and the psyches of Indian Muslims. I was quoting to you an example of popular front of India and they are not the only ones who are doing it. These Amravati activists saying that they left the popular front of India because they thought that they are fighting for the legitimate socio-economic rights, educational rights, etc., etc. of the community, but they were being told that Very few people offer namaz five times namaz, sir. वो पढ़ते हैं कि नहीं पढ़ते हैं अलग बात है मगर जो एजेंडा इंपोज किया जा रहा है तो ये कहते हैं ना कि लेट मुस्लिम भी फ्री नमाज पढ़ना है तो जरूर पढ़े और सर जिसको नहीं पढ़ना नहीं पढ़े बट आवर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन गिव्स एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ए पर्सन राइट टू प्रोपोगेट देयर रिलीजन इफ समबडी कम्स टू यू एंड से मिस्टर जावेद आनंद यू शुड ऑफर फाइव टाइम नमाज एंड इफ दैट प्रोपोगेशन इज पीसफुल व्हाट इज द हार्म माय कॉकस my counter propagation to that is that this is not you who are you to tell me this who are you to tell me this will you let will will you let an ahmadiyya let an ahmadiyya in your mohalla kind of course preach his version of quran his version of islam of course of course, so, course ahmadiyya should also be allowed to preach their islam sir try and do that in malegaon for example or bhivandi talk to muslims there and they'll tell you what they can do and what they cannot do Ordinary Muslims who have nothing to do with the Ahmadiyya faith, who are part of the Sunni, this thing are declared uh, the, the apostates at the short notice. It happened four years ago in Malegao. Sir, I keep uh, listening to this fact by progressive and secular sections uh, within the Muslims community that earlier women were not wearing hijab it is imposition or it is influence of uh, let's say wahhabi islam or popular front of india you have also uh, said the similar thing but my point is can there be any empirical evidence to say that before 1960s and 70s people were uh, muslims were wearing less number of hijab and now they are wearing more number of hijab can it be proved talk or is it to, just the hypothesis talk to muslims talk to muslims and they will tell you this Yesterday, I was in a program where a uh, Muslim scholar, a Muslim educationist, come uh, academic, come uh, activist from Pune, Razia Patel was there, 
and she was giving the example of she comes from a district in maharashtra she said my dadi never wore a hijab my nani did not wear a hijab my mother did not wear a hijab i did not wear a hijab she said there could be is. many people who would say that my my dadi my nani my nani ka nani also wearing hijab you can say that you can say that but i mean you don't want to listen to what elder muslim women are saying from aligarh to a district in maharashtra to what people are will tell you from uh, karnataka and kerala then you have a right to your view what else can i say you are saying that hamare ghar mein i can talk about my own family if you like will that make any difference to you my immediate family there was no burqa 30 years ago it came with the petro dollars but sir social class will also determine what you eat what you read what you wear what you do so all talking, muslims are not the same i am talking about the same class which was something else yesterday and is something becoming something else today for example in jnu i find muslim who are wearing hijab and there are also muslims who are smoking and drinking also so fine that's great what but is the problem but to say that uh, to say that all muslims are wearing hijab or muslims are under the influence of those who are propagating hijab is it not something very uh, what should i say biased and stereotype uh, uh, understanding dr kumar i think please talk to some muslims from any district in india you choose and ask them where, where the hijab was how prevalent it was until the 80s and how it has become since the late 80s onwards and you will have your answer there is nothing more i can say, say, say to okay, that okay sir sir i have got just two questions okay. you have said that in saudi arabia now the people are giving up hijab and they are moving out of it on the other hand in india people i mean to say that the muslim uh, conservative sections they are uh, underscoring the importance of hijab so you have said that look at how there are two different ways in which the hijab issue is being propagated but somebody may ask the question that mr javed anand at one time if wahhabi islam is imported from saudi arabia and it is influencing uh, people uh, muslims in uh, in india that is a problem on on the other hand if uh, saudi arabia is uh, banning islam uh, hijab or it is not promoting hijab then you cite saudi arabia as an example so how could be there two ways and even several human rights organization and religious freedom organization in the west they have completely opposed and even noam chomsky has said the situation in india in india is not um, very good so why shouldn't you take examples and listen to people in the west who according to you are modern and secular on the other hand you are giving example from saudi arabia how could saudi arabia be and be a model for secular democracy i <laughs> i am the last person who will cite saudi arabia as a model for democracy No, I no, think I am you... saying no no I am saying that how could Saudi Arabia be seen as a model for secular democracy is it not paradoxical I was I was pointing out to fellow muslims ke look kal tak until yesterday you were being told by the same people who had taught you the parda today are moving away from the parda now what are you talking about 5 years from now what do you do that is that, that is the interesting part of the whole story I am not otherwise I am no fan of Saudi Arabia why should i quote saudi arabia i quote islamic scholars internationally rec recognized islamic scholars like amina wadud like khalid abu al fadl like asma barlas like rafat hussain and a whole number of them pari rizak from saudi south africa there is my dear friend a struggle going on within islam in fact dr rafiq zakaria wrote a book titled the struggle within islam 30 years ago something something like that okay there is a struggle going on for the the muslim community in india and globally needs reforms and there there is this kind of atmosphere building up of winds of change if you like to call it within the community pro reform and a reform is this reform is badly needed to say this i do not have to disagree with noam chomsky i don't even need noam chomsky to tell me how terrible the situation in india is I am a Muslim, so I am faith. I, I, I know what it's about more than anybody else, sir. But in your article, the main agenda that Muslim women are being denied education, they have their right to education, was missing in my reading, and many scholars have interpreted the ban on hijab 
as a move by hindutva forces to further uh, marginalize muslims community and those muslims women were very vocal uh, against ntca protest you know in karnataka that the private university have already increased their fees and the muslims poor muslims girl cannot go to school so why not you should talk more about women's muslims women's right to education than the hijab issue because secular hindus do not talk about the problem of muslim communalism muslim narrow mindedness muslim conservatism muslim orthodoxy the need for reform from the within the muslim community so progressive muslims whether it's me or whether it's the razia patel or any number of other indians or those worldwide need to talk about the problem within the community we need to talk about both problems at the same time if we nobody else is talking about it we do not talk about it then who talks about it the fact that there is a struggle going on within the community for an Im- interpretation of understanding of islam which is in consonance with modernity with the modern world is well universally accepted values and there is an different islam which is in conflict with it and keeps running into conflict with it all the time this will be brought on the agenda and i am not apologetic one bit uh, would you like to say something in conclusion something that is missing or uh, maybe that how this issue should be approached in the future any message for uh, muslims community secular people progressive people anything that you want to add and say something now it is yeah up. yeah just 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 one just one thing i want to say in conclusion that there is no question that <coughs> the muslim community in india is a targeted community it is being targeted by the majoritarian hindutva politics <coughs> we are in an extremely dangerous kind of situation especially since 2014 you know through everything from corona jihad to thug jihad to this jihad to that jihad uh, love jihad uh, 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 vigilance in the name of gaurakshak the whole works religious conversion ke liye alag alag law that is coming up so the muslim community is being targeted in all kinds of ways on an on every day basis and this is a deeply disturbing state of affairs that all secular indians whether they are muslims or christians or sikhs or hindus or whatever they are must fight against hindu majority must fight and the politics that the hindu majority are playing in karnataka also must be talked about and it has been talked about everybody else is talking about only that i think something else needs to be also added to that which is what i am doing and which is what people like me in the west have also been saying for some time that secular liberals <coughs> must stand by the rights of muslims who are sought to be denied whether in india or wherever else but they also need to be aware that in the process they don't end up strengthening the muslim right that means right wing muslim politics that that's all i want to say in conclusion sir thank you very much thank you so much for having me thank you